Nice to meet you, Professor. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Very honored to be here. How many patrons do you have? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, my name's Bob Langer. I'm uh, one of 12 institute professors at MIT. Uh, we have a lab of like 100 plus people doing different areas of biomedical engineering, like nanoparticles and uh, tissue engineering. And uh, I have something like over 1,500 scientific papers and over 1,400 <coughs> issued or pending patents. What motivated me to start a business? Mm -hmm. Well, I'd say that, so I love doing basic research and I love inventing things and even writing scientific papers on it. Mm -hmm. But to me, if we're going to really make an impact, I don't think we can just do that in the academic lab. So I think businesses can do that. You know, at MIT, we really can't do clinical trials. We can't do manufacturing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, you know, and, 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 and we're really just doing the, the nucleus, the basic work. But the companies can take it so much further, and they can create products, whether it's the Moderna vaccine mm -hmm. or drug-eluting stents or other things that uh, we've been involved with. Found. Right. The first company I found was a company called Enzatec. When? 1987. In well, that's always a hard question. I might yeah. ask which of my three children is most oppressive. <laughs> All of them to be are oppressive in one way or another. But I suppose the one that's most famous is Moderna. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it certainly made a giant impact on the world. Well, I mean, I'll, 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 I could pick a couple. I mean, one. Another one I'm very fond of is uh, a Memento. We started that with two of my students to make polysaccharide um, molecules, and, and, and we got a number of approvals. Uh, Johnson & Johnson ultimately acquired the company for $6.5 billion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but there are many. I mean, it's, there are many companies that I'm very proud of that we've been involved in. But at the beginning. Sure. Well, the way, so we had worked on using nanoparticles or developing nanoparticles that could deliver large molecules starting in 1974. Mm -hmm. I also got involved in helping uh, transferring technology out of our lab to start companies. So in 2010, Derek Rossi, who was a scientist at Harvard, and Ken Chen, and myself, and Nubar Fayan, who's an MIT graduate, uh, but also uh, started flagship pioneering, four of us uh, got together and decided to try to start a company called Moderna, and the whole idea mm -hmm. was what I'll call messenger RNA therapeutics. So there's a central dogma, DNA makes RNA makes proteins. And for years, protein therapies have become increasingly important. In fact, one of the early companies was Genetech, and I was an advisor to them starting in the 70s, shortly after they began. And that was a tremendous advance that you could make proteins, but it takes a long time to make them, and there's lots of diseases mm -hmm. they can't treat. Um, so if DNA makes RNA makes protein, well then you could use RNA to make the protein. And that would be so much faster, rather than use eggs, for example, to grow up vaccines, you could just take a little bit of RNA, put it in a nanoparticle because you have to protect it, inject it into the body, and then the body does all the work, the body makes the protein. So what that enab would enable you to do is greatly accelerate the production of vaccines or protein therapeutics. It would also allow you to treat new diseases you could never treat before. Diseases that might be membrane bound based on a molecule or inside a cell. So that was how it started. The four of us got together. We got together usually uh, once a week for seven or eight months, you know, writing patents, planning strategy, hiring people. Um, and, you know, then we hired a terrific uh, CEO, Stefan von Sell, uh, and then lots of other people. And that was like, the, you know, we got a little lab uh, not too far from my office. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we kind of went from there. Now Moderna has over 3,000 people and something like, you know, uh, over uh, 35 products uh, in different clinical trials. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the vaccine mm -hmm. is used all over the world. Do you fail? A couple. Uh, you know, maybe a failure is relative, right? I'd say that... Um, you know, of the 40, I think well over 30 are still around, mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. of them are around, in one form or another. They either are public companies or they're private co companies or they've been merged into 
existing companies like they got acquired. But a couple of them didn't do so well. I mean, you know, where they ran out of money and... Um, just a couple? Yeah, I think two or three, mm -hmm. yeah, out of the 40. Well, I think it will evolve in a very positive way. You know, one can look at the Moderna pipeline, and there's certainly other companies like BioNTech and CureVac, you know, and now large pharmaceutical companies are starting to do it too. But I think what you'll see are not only COVID vaccines, but vaccines for, uh, for respiratory viruses, for uh, flu, for, um, you know, all different kinds of vaccines, including cancer vaccines. I think you'll see new treatments for various rare diseases like enzyme deficiency diseases, uh, just treatments with, for cystic fibrosis. I think it's quite unlimited. I think you'll see messenger RNA therapeutics and messenger RNA vaccines used for many, many things. How are you most interested nowadays? Well, we're interested in a lot of things in the lab. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I break it down to a couple areas. One, we're doing a lot of work on drug delivery system on new types of nanoparticles that might deliver nucleic acids. We're doing a lot of work with the Gates Foundation mm -hmm. to try to develop new drug delivery systems and medicines for the developing world, including children. Um, we're working also on tissue engineering. Can you create, um, you know, can you understand better how cells grow and materials, and can you use that knowledge to someday create new pancreases, uh, new spinal cords, uh, vo new vocal cords, uh, blood vessels, things like that. Additional companies in the near future? Yeah, we always do. You know, like my students come to me with different ideas or my postdocs with different ideas. Mm -hmm. We'll probably start, we're starting a company on a new gel you can swallow that coats the stomach or other places in the body. And, you know, but the one that coats the stomach might be used for preventing obesity. Mm. We're also uh, probably going to start a company on what I'll call self-boosting vaccines. Like you give an injection, mm. but normally you have to keep coming back uh, for another injection, another yes. injection. Here the idea is you just inject once wow. a cocktail, mm -hmm. but the cocktail is such that some of the things come out at time zero, some at a month, maybe some at six months, maybe at a year. So you get, you get a delivery pattern that's pulsatile uh, at, at, at discrete time points, mm -hmm. but you just give one injection. Uh, Korean company uh, recently? Well, I'm, I'm involved with the four companies in Korea. Mm -hmm. I think they're all terrific. Uh, there's Aprobio, which I'm on the board of, and they're working uh, on the board of directors, and they're working on, uh, on, on ways of uh, creating what are called bispecific antibodies, which you know, might be useful for, for treating COVID or mm -hmm. cancer. Uh, MEPSGEN, which one of my former students, Tony Kim, started. You know, they're developing like a brain on a chip. Mm -hmm. um, Genuve, which is a very exciting company. They're already in clinical trials for treating brain diseases. Um, you know, and Gene Medicine, which uh, uh, Cheyak, who was one of, uh, she was on sabbatical with me, and she's a professor over, over in Korea. And mm -hmm. that's also very exciting. They're using... Uh, you know, certain types of oncolytic viruses to treat cancer, and they're also in clinical trials. So all four of them, to me, it's been a pleasure to work with them. They're all making, I think, very good progress. Always. Oh. It really, my schedule for every day varies a lot. You know, Nature, the journal, they followed me around for a day, and they have a three-page article on my what I did that day. I, I'd say that's pretty typical. But other days, like today, I was at a Moderna board meeting almost all day. You know, I, I, I actually got up at something like 6 in the morning. I had to make a call. Uh, then I went to the Moderna board meeting. Then uh, I was at that almost the whole time till 4. Then, you know, I had to make another call and driving over here. You know, then this meeting, then another meeting. And, and this is a day of my vacation. Then I fly, drive, drive back to Cape Cod. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, you know, it, it really varies. I mean, a lot of times it's meeting with students, mm -hmm. get calls, emails, uh, sometimes meeting government, talk, helping governments. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything, helping companies, everything. What's the what? Important. Well, what's important to me is helping the different people that want my help if I can help them. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I read the Nature article, it seemed to me mm. like they went through, through a day and had me giving advice everywhere from students, like undergraduates, 
to the President of the United States, who then was Barack Obama. You know, so that was the, uh, the Nature article. And, you know, and I apparently, you know, that day, you know, they had a lecture, you know, sometimes they give lectures. I mean, sometimes people from different countries come, you know. So it's, it's all of that, you know, it, it, it really varies. Every day is different, but, you know, it will probably involve meeting with different people, answering lots of emails. Usually it's often given speeches, you know, giving advice, different things like that. So um, this is the Wolf Prize. That's like the highest prize in Israel. It's like their Nobel Prize. That's for chemistry. This is Kyoto Prize. That's one of Japan's two highest oh, prizes. Oh, from Japan. That's from Japan, yeah. This is the Gardner Prize. That's the Canada's highest prize. This is the National Medal of Technology and Innovation. Uh, Barack Obama gave me that. That's one. Wow. Of yeah. Um, <laughs> this is um, the... Draper Prize, that's uh, considered the Engineering Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. This is the Lemelson Prize, that's for being like the best inventor in the world. This is the National Medal of Science, that's the highest science prize in the United States. <laughs> George Bush gave me that. So sorry for stopping, but which one is your uh, your uh, most important, most proud? <laughs> you know, it's probably not here. You know, if I were picking one. Mm -hmm. It's probably, uh, they made a trophy for me, it's the Queen Elizabeth Prize for oh. Engineering. That's the kind of the Nobel Prize for Engineering, and um, that, that's like about a $1.6 million U.S. prize, and, and then the Queen gives it to you, and it's on video. But, and then you you're in person? Yeah, oh yeah, I can show you on the, the view on the internet, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but, but yeah, they invited our, me and my family to Buckingham Palace, and wow. so that was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> but they were all, all good. <laughs> Well, what I'd say to Korean scientists who are starting companies are probably the same thing I'd say to U.S. scientists that are starting a company. I think it's a great experience. It's an opportunity to take your discoveries or someone's discoveries and bring them to the world and, 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 and do good things for the world. I think there's a number of things that are important, though, when you try to do it. First, you don't want to start too early, especially in medicine, because the risk is high and it takes a long time in the medical area to move something from basic research to clinical trials to product. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think it's really important to have intellectual property, you know, patents. Third, I think you really do want to have a good team, good business people, good scientists. Fourth, I'd say don't start too early, you know, make, try to reduce risk, mm -hmm. like at least maybe have good animal data and, and to show that your approach is working. Mm -hmm. So those would be some general pieces of advice.